So now I want to look at um, inflation over time and return back to the issue of hyperinflation. Um, quite simply, um, we live in low inflationary times. Prices are increasing less than 2%. Um, which is why, to some extent, maybe you think that this chapter isn't that useful. Uh, because for almost all of you in this class, during your lifetime, um, inflation has been incredibly low. So, if that's the case, um, Right, why do we do this? Well, because we don't think it's always going to be this way. We would suspect that at some point um, inflation will increase. And um, we would then, obviously, it would be important to know how it's being measured. Um, and there are high periods of time. So in the late 1970s, again, and I know I'm repeating myself from point number one, inflation exceeded 10% a year. Um, and it caused phenomenal problems in the economy, problems that we'll look at in um, number 11 on this agenda. The most problems, though, occur when you have hyperinflation. And you will see that I dealt with that um, in number one and number two. Uh, we see hyperinflation typically when the prices are increasing. Um, I know there's a specific number at which we start to define it, and I know it's greater certainly than 100% a month. Um, but basically, if prices were doubling every month, the inflation becomes so bad that people start hoarding things, people start... Um, not participating in the legal economy, and hyperinflation always, always, always leads to the economy collapsing.